So I um I actually uh, don't use my, well I use social I don't use social media no Facebook thing the Twitter the Insta, well that stuff I don't use that stuff I just uh, use YouTube uh, which I had an account for a long time and I also uh, uh, post on uh, Google Plus uh, Google Plus so those are the two um, social platforms whatever you call it they do plus you know the regular SMS that doesn't matter or also WhatsApp um, but that's, that's certain things. But um, I, 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 and I check the internet all the time and I was checking, I check out um, uh, Yvette Cornell and, 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 and her, her guy that does all the technical, uh, uh, I read, the, the, the African or the Ghanaian, you know, African-American cat that's with her. Anyway, uh, oh, I'm drinking, by the way, just in case, I'm drinking a grape and coconut water uh, thing. South African brand here. Anyway, this has uh, it says coconut water is known as nature's sports drink because it's full of electrolytes like, like sodium, potassium, and magnesium. It's funny when they say the, those kind of things. Uh, it's, it's funny to me because what happens is uh, they, they say, for instance, this is great and coconut water, 100% fruit blend. Then they talk about grape and coconut water, right? Then they start talking about coconut water because they want to sell you coconut water as new. Then I'm looking at the ingredients. Let me look at the ingredients. It says uh, reconstituted grape concentrate. Reconstituted grape concentrate. Okay, what's the grape concentrate? That's the question we got to ask. What's in that grape concentrate? You know what I'm saying? Is it like uh, GMO grapes? It says, you know, slave pick grapes, whatever it is anyway. Then it has uh, coconut water, okay? Citric acid grape skin extract, okay? Vitamin C flavoring. Maybe flavoring. I thought the grapes in the, in the, in the, in the, in the coconut water, anyway. Uh, vitamin C, uh, high vitamin C preservative free. Okay, so you gotta keep them in a cool, dry place after the refrigerate after opening. Consume within five days. So that's what I'm drinking now, wetting my palate. Uh, this is how Yvette always, and I we always start there. I think they do their podcast on Mondays and Wednesdays or something like that. You should check it out on YouTube or Facebook, or whatever you, you do. Yvette Cornell, how does she spell her name? Cornell. It's um, C O R and then the other, something like that. I'll look it up. Um, so they posted this thing, and uh, why are blacks worried about sanctuary cities? Is the title of the. Of the uh, posting and it was uh, on the 27th of, of January that they posted it. That's a little bit, two days ago. And uh, so I, I saw it uh, on YouTube and so I reposted it, you know, on, uh, on Google Plus under uh, news and information from the NBK, uh, New Black Knowledge uh, community, because I like the New Black Knowledge community. Yeah. All right, so, anyway, so I posted it there and um, got some responses. And there's some spy named Yvonne, Yvette Love. So because some of us are blacks are here from other countries and also once they start the divide and conquer game, we're next. Okay, then somebody answered her um, so true. Then somebody named Sabrina Black says, yes, we need to put ourselves first. We have a lot of issues to address. Uh, there's no time and value in, in, in talking about everyone else. Okay, Sabrina. Um, with that. Uh, then it goes on like that. But Yvonne later on says something about, I'm from Brazil here working in the capital. I guess she means uh, Washington, D.C. And I can assure you that many African people from all over the world are feeling uncomfortable seeing how Trump is treating other minorities. It's blatant racist. <laughs> well, how about that? I live in a country that has no race. Yes, you are not allowed to be African unless you are actually from Africa. Yet, when we have to fight back, we all, indigenous African, native uh, Indians, and African people who came from here all get together. The poorest and richest among us have to, have to stand up. We might, we might be in a rich country, but we are... We, oh, we, we, we might not be in a rich country. I guess I think she's talking about Brazil. Yeah, I'm from Brazil. But we are a united one. Interesting. I'm sitting in South Africa. I like when they say there's no race or whatever, whatever they're saying. 
We had similar situations in South Africa, but when you dig deep and you start talking, you know, you see what happens. Anyway, and then it keeps on going and, and some other comments. But I wanted to, to I, I wrote something and uh, I want to read it. It's only one page. I want to read it. So here we go. Uh, I, I guess this is the answer to, but this is the answer to, to, to this. It deals with the post. Um, um, Though the divide and conquer tactic used very effectively through the decades by the Anglo racist white supremacist uh, system has and is to this day a most effective strategy, it is not uh, applicable in the context into which this issue should be addressed. I'm talking about this divide and conquer thing. This is a situation where the lineage of an amalgamation of people who came through a horrific economic enterprise known as the Atlantic Slave Trade, knee, middle passage, uh, many in this lineage further impacted by European forced miscegenation, talking about you know slave masters, whatever, boinking the slaves, okay, uh, and more numbers of uh, further gene uh, genealogically imp um, imp impacted by American autochthonous groupings, like American Indians. These descendants of former African captives have to en uh, having to endure antebellum conspiracies, Jim Crow era lynchings and indignities, and mass incarceration, struggle to overcome our status through writings, oration, demonstrations, then I have bracket arm, close bracket, actions, sheer will, dot, 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 to a point whereby we learn most of our gains um, have suffered reversal through political slash legal shenanigans. From, this, from the 1960s through current waves of immigration along with downtrodden classifications that include gender, sexual, religious, and other categories, all having been seemingly conjured to dilute arguments for reparations due us, the, since the descendants of chattel slavery. A whole lot of the group gets reparations, you know, even groups that, that, that have nothing to do with the with, with, with United States of North America, you know, groups from World War II, they get reparations, they don't even live there. Anyway, get back to the point here. Ghanaian repatriation offers to African Americans notwithstanding, I'm talking about that uh, Ghana recently said that any African American is welcome to repatriate or to, to, to hold citizenships in Ghana, in Ghana. I wonder if that dual citizenship, that would be really good. I would like a whole, you know, African dual citizenship, whatever, you know, between the states. Okay. okay. The struggle is worldwide. Whether you be from Brazil or the Caribbean or even African nations, your struggle is in those areas of the globe unless we, in our similar struggle, ask your assistance. Okay? You struggle where you are, Get that straight, get free, right? If you need our assistance, you ask. You know, everybody. it was done before. We, I'm sitting here in South Africa. What, the apartheid movement was, I think it's maybe the only movement that was worldwide. They asked the assistance of the world, and the world came to them. I mean, I was up there protesting on Second Avenue, the, the South African embassy, you know, signs, you know, apartheid equals hate, you know, that kind of thing. Back, back in, what's that, the 80s? Yeah. You know, we, we divest from colleges or whatever. So they asked and we, we assisted. We didn't come here to assist. We, it's, we, we, uh, uh, we, we were there assisting. So you got to ask, okay? Um, as the vanguard of our struggle in North America, we African-Americans of the aforementioned Middle Passage lineage have every right to collect on past and present wealth built through our intellectual, physical and spiritual contributions in the building of the modern empire known as the United States of North America. In short, the divide and conquer mode has been morphed into a strategy of dilute and conquer. Groupings invade our cause, namely the black American cause, right? Having used us as the tip of the spear, poster children for movements, and when some success manifests, through these movements, they reap, you know, people reap the benefits while we are still in struggle. 
In other words, we put out front, we do all of what's called heavy lifting, we <laughs> little monochrome of, of, of success, then other people jump over us. I mean, a good example, even within our own, a good example would be somebody like, like Clarence Thomas. Clarence Thomas in his hearings to become Supreme Court Justice said, oh, he had nothing to do with, affirmative action had nothing to do with, he pulled himself by his book, whatever. Well, what a crock of whatever. If it wasn't for the NAACP and all those, and those people marching in the 60s or whatever have you, the upheavals, you know, they wouldn't even, literally, he wouldn't even, come on, let's, let me not get off on that one. Let me, I'll finish, I'm almost, almost, almost there, right? Let me go back to that paragraph. I like that, that little, that short thing right there. In short, the divide and conquer uh, mode has been, have morphed into a dilute and conquer. Groupings having, uh, groupings invade our cause have used us as a tip of the spear, poster children of movements, and when some success manifests, reap the benefits while we are still in struggle. I would strongly suggest a counter strategy would be of uh, would be for the conquered downtrodden groups or groupings worldwide to employ the tactic of challenging slash fighting this unjust system by shoring up their own barricades in efforts to defeat the crony banksters, cracker capitalists, shyster politicians, and other agents of ill will, no matter their racial stripe. Because, well, let me let me go back up this, this before I your word. Okay, I'm gonna apologize. Well, let me, well, I'm gonna apologize because I'm supposed to be. I'm, I'm trying my best this year to be under the the, the Neely Fuller Jr. you know compensatory uh, concept code, and there's just no name calling is one of the things in the code. But I have to do that name calling. In fact, I like those. Let me try. Let me do this one again too. I would strongly suggest a counter strategy would be for the conquered, quote, conquered, uh, downtrodden groupings worldwide to employ a tactic of challenging, fighting this unjust system by shoring up their own barricades in efforts to defeat the crony banksters, cracker capitalists, shyster politicians, and other agents of ill will, no matter their racial stripe, before calling on unity from the relatively smaller number, black downtrodden surviving troops of the descendants of North American slavery. It's signed by brother A.J. Sloan. This day, January 29th, or 29 January 2017. Uh, A.J. Sloan, the brother, uh, that would be me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.